The short game is listener supported on Patreon. If you'd like to support the show and join us on our Discord, head to theshortgame.net or patreon.com slash the short game. Welcome back to The Short Game. This is a show about short video games, games that respect your time. I am Reagan Kelly, and I am joined this week by my globe-trotting co-host. Laura Nash. Yes, we both have been absent from the podcast for different reasons for a little bit. Yeah. Um, so thank you, listeners, for bearing with us, and thank you very much to our co-hosts, Shane and Nate, for holding down the fort for the last two weeks. Uh, I really, really enjoyed uh, listening to and editing those episodes, uh, and it was a little weird not being on the podcast for so long. Um, but Laura and I are back, and Shane and Nate are taking a well-deserved break this week. Uh, and Laura and I are going to be talking about Fall of Porcupine, a game that um, I think we both started before we both had uh, large life interruptions, and mm-hmm. uh, and so now we're looping back to cover it. Uh, yeah. Laura, where have you been? Uh France, Belgium, and uh, Netherlands. So, yeah, Europe. Right. Uh, I was on a two, two and a half week trip with my uh, husband's family, and it was very eventful, including his sister got engaged. Congratulations mm. uh, on the trip. And everybody else on the trip, apparently, except Justin and I, knew this was happening. <laughs> <laughs> Did she um, know this was going to happen for no. her? Oh, that's sweet. Um, we, we thought it... We thought she was anticipating it because she got a very nice manicure before the trip. And I made a joke like, ah, she's expecting a ring on that Hand finger. Photos. But apparently <laughs> someone had just, a friend had just said like, I advise you before a trip to like get a manicure pedicure, like get your like hair cut, like make yourself look good, feel good before because trips are really wearying. And so she had given herself like a mini makeover and we were like, oh, Allie's looking good. She's ready for engagement photos. Uh, Completely coincidental. Apparently freaked him out quite a bit. (laughs) (laughs) Well, good for them. That's so sweet. And man, you know, like a two and a half week European vacation, that is a lot. So it sounds like you probably got some. Well, I'm looking forward to our what's making us happy this week segment. At the end, I'll ask you about some some stuff from your trip, I'm sure. I'll just, I'll try not to brag for 20 minutes. Um, yeah. But it was a very lovely time and we hadn't been on vacation in a while. So we both, we, this week we've been doing essentially nothing except being in our apartment because we needed a, a bit of a change, which is nice. Hmm. I, I also was on a little bit of a trip, but then I got sick. And so just sort of the, the timing of it, I, I had a nice little uh, work trip uh, to Seattle and uh, had, you know, so we did a couple of nice things there, but it was mostly work. And then as soon as I got home, people in my house started getting sick. And uh, that eventually included me and uh, just sort of knocked us out of the schedule for a little while. But mm-hmm. here we are back. And I'm eager to talk about Fall of Porcupine, which is a game that basically as soon as I saw it, I think I might have first seen this game in the Ludo Naricon. Um, sort of demo and trailer, you know, drop. Yes, um, and we decided not to play it because it had been available for a while and was coming out soon. So we figured we'd just play the whole thing. Yeah, or I, or I may have known a little bit about it prior to that, but like certainly it was is on my on my radar because of Ludo Naricon. Yeah. Oddly enough, I found out the demo is actually a little prequel, um, and is not the beginning of this game, which I only found out about this morning doing my research. So I, I don't think playing the demo would have. Um, affected the play, but just a heads up if anyone is trying the demo, it's not a sample of the actual game. It's kind of like Night in the Woods, like, which we'll say a lot in this game. It's a, There is a prequel story released as a demo. Yeah. I found a lot of games are doing that these days. I, it seems to be like a um, like a successful strategy to get people to try your demo to kind of say like, hey, it's not a demo. It's a complete mini prequel game that you can download for free on Steam and maybe even it has its own uh, page separate from the main game page, etc. Um, and I certainly understand the business reasons for doing that. And it, it is a somewhat appealing concept, but I almost never find that like that doesn't I don't I don't like when games do that. And that's because like, I don't generally play a lot of demos. I just play games, you know, like, uh, um, for me, like, I, I, I just want to jump in and, and see the beginning of the real thing, right. And mm. um, 
you know, I'll sometimes play demos if there's a, if there's a compelling reason to, but having this like demo be this, this whole other separate experience that in many cases I won't play before playing the main game leaves me sometimes wondering, was I supposed to play this before playing the main game? Am I missing out on something? Mm -hmm. In this case, I didn't think I was missing anything. No, I don't feel that way either. I'm sure this is sort of just like, you know, here's, here's, you know, Finley's first day on the job because this game picks up after he's been there for a few weeks or something like that. Um, you know, which is, is fine. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I always sort of feel weird about that as a, as a demo strategy. It must work for them though, because lots of places have been doing it. Yeah. Well, we haven't actually described what this game is about. Um, just, that was just a heads up for those who were, if you were looking for our take on the demo, we don't have one. No, not yet. Not yet. Um, but this game is, I mentioned Night in the Woods. Um, I think my husband said, this is a woods-like. And I was like, please don't. <laughs> but, um, in that, uh, it is a 2D like platformer lightly, like you're jumping around and walking. But mostly you're talking to folks. You have um, a lot of mini games. You have a lot of like days where you do the same thing every day, but you have some choices about how you spend your evening. There's a lot of structural and art style things liberally borrowed from Night in the Woods, but this one is focused instead of on a, uh, our first dirt bag of the year. Um, (laughs) It's focused on a junior doctor, Finley the Pigeon, who is working at St. Ursula's Hospital and like what the experiences of, of being a, hospital worker in a very small town where you're treating patients you know well. Anything I left off, Reagan? No, I think that's about it. I think the thing that really drew me into this is obviously, you know, I've I'm a huge lover of Night in the Woods. Um and I I I love the uh this is has a similar art style, but in some ways it's actually a, a, they're going for a little more um high detail and also a little more cartoony. Um mm-hmm. Uh, in in ways, and I, I quite like the the art style here. Immediately, I was drawn in by that, and also I like the idea of using the sort of format of Night in the Woods, the sort of narrative forward um, adventure game, but not a point and click. I've always felt like the, I, I enjoy games more if I have direct control of the character in in, a, in the way that Night in the Woods provides, even if it even if the jumping is a little you know just a goofy little thing to do while you're walking across a screen. Um, I like that better than a point and click adventure, just by the way my brain and hands work when I play games. And um, the fact that this is so specifically focused on the medical industry is something that you never see in games. There are, you know, when you see doctors in games, it's like Dr. Mario or something, right? Like it's it's not- Or it's from the patient perspective. Like- Yeah. I've seen that several times, or there's a- a main character or side character who's being treated, but it's not necessarily set in a hospital. Right. Whereas this is a, this is a night in the woods style game, you know, night in the woods. Um, it had a lot of themes, but ultimately it was sort of about a small town sort of post-industrial America, um, you know, uh, uh, surviving under capitalism, um, you know, caring for each other, lots of other stuff like that. And I was really eager to see that approach applied to, uh, medicine, which I think is, it's a, it's a whole world, you know, being a doctor or, or being in the medical industry is an entire world with lots of its own, uh, complexities and problems and so on. And being able to sort of focus, uh, on that I thought was really interesting. So I was really excited to play this also as backstory, like, you know, some listeners may know this about me, but like, you know, my, my wife is a doctor, um, my my day job is vaguely medical related. I work for a, a software company that builds basically software for medicine. Um, you know, there's like I'm in that world quite a bit, and so I'm kind of connected with. I'm not a, I'm not an expert on like medical policy or anything, but I'm I'm you know definitely aware of the the problems in specifically the medical industry in America. Um, we'll come back to that because that's yes. a, is a interesting aspect to this game. Yeah, but if I had to give a like one liner pitch, I would say this is Scrubs meets Night in the Woods, but not a comedy. Mm-hmm. Although there is charm and lightness at times, it is it is the tone is definitely it's not a it is not a it is Scrubs in the way of being a doctor is 
hard in the day to day, not scrubs in the tone. Yeah. So what do you think makes more sense for us to talk about first, the, the plot or just sort of the the general, I don't know, gameplay of this thing? Because we, we kind of described it as Night in the Woods-like, um, but folks who haven't played Night in the Woods may need a little bit of a, or haven't played it in a while, may need a little bit of a refresher on what that means. Yeah. Past Laura took some good notes on the structure of why this was similar to Night in the Woods, so I'm going to channel the notes from that and read them off, which is specifically there's kind of like Night in the Woods, there are three acts of three days each. Uh, you wake up in the morning, you can you need to get to work. So you traverse a town, you can talk to townspeople. There's some very light platforming, but it's exploratory. It's, you know, which hill you go up, do you go up or down? Who do yeah, you talk what's to? The, what's the best or most interesting route from your, ho- from your um, uh, apartment to your job? That kind mm-hmm. of thing. Uh, Then there's a section of each day at the hospital where you are making the rounds. Uh, You are uh, treating patients, which is often little mini games. Um, You are trying to uh, impress your the doctor you report to because you are in a junior role. Sometimes you're talking to other people in similar positions. But the part of it really is talking to a patient who you may or may not have met previously in town and uh, then a little mini game to do the treatment, the suture, the checking their heartbeat, the, there are five mini games that cycle through and they get harder as you go. But um, I will say, play this with a controller because it's, I've, I imagine it'd be quite hard on keyboard because I played it on Switch and holding buttons is a big deal. Man, I had a hard time with, I mean, just while, side note on that particular mini game. There's like there a are, quick time event mini game of like, press these buttons in order. <laughs> yeah, th- there's there's a lot of different mini games that are meant to sort of um, stand in for the various things that Finley does as part of his job. Changing you know, dressings. Care of patients. Yeah. All kinds um, of stuff. And I actually thought they were really clever uh, and mm-hmm. well done. Um, the one that Laura was referring to there was one where, um, you know, the, the sort of simulating the dexterity involved in doing things like changing dressings or other sort of manual aspects of of treating a patient um, was um, it would ask you to hold down a series of five or six buttons on your controller all at once. And it wouldn't tell you what all of them were. It would tell you them one at a time. So it was Mm -hmm. like playing Twister on your controller and you might get halfway through it and realize your fingers are in the wrong position to do it and you need to go back and try again. And it was on a timer. So you'd need to do it fast enough in order to get a good grade or what have you. Um, and there were a lot of others too. I actually really liked the one that was kind of like Wordle or like with um, uh, with like little symbols. Mm. You know the one I'm talking about? It's like you yeah. have a, uh, it, you'd have like – you'd put in a series of five symbols of things like eyes and teeth and brains and – you know, broken bones and things. And you put in a little ser- series of symbols and then it would tell you, okay, like three of these symbols are right or, you know, they're, they turn green if they're in the right position and you have to shuffle them around. It was basically like wordless wordle. And I really liked the pill one where you're, it, it's very mathematical of like, what is the right cornucopia of pills to prescribe that will have oh, the yeah, desired effect in the fewest pills, which is like a little, uh, there's no, actual math involved but it is a math game mm-hmm. uh, so the the, uh, the the mini games sometimes you know i hear the word mini games and i kind of groan um but here they really do work they don't overstay their welcome there's not too many of them they're not wario wear style they feel no. like they've they feel thoughtful yeah and they they just sort of feel like you know the, the game needs to provide you some way to be involved in the activity of treating patients and uh, and I thought they were really successful. Um, so and some of them were harder than others. I had a, a really hard time with the one that was like vaguely like a rhythm game mm-hmm. um, where you were like reading an EKG. You're moving up and down and pressing buttons at certain times. So yeah, that one was really tricky for me. Um, but like overall, I, I was like I, I'm a I'm a skeptic about mini games in games generally. But like Night in the Woods did this as well. They they had a lot of these mini games things like you know your band practice and things like that. Um, that would come up again and again. And and they, in, in Night in the Woods, they were something I looked forward to. And the same thing here, like interacting with patients was actually really interesting and kind of fulfilling. Um, that you know, felt feeling... like the heart of the game. It did, yeah. Um, and that's a, that's a huge success because like it's, I think it it's hard to make a game about something like treating patients in a hospital and make it not feel like... Um, 
did, did you ever play there was this series of games on the ds and the the um and the the wii i think that was like oh what was that called um i'll think of the name in a minute but there was this like very goofy very anime inflected doctoring game surgeon I, simulator no although that's a whole different thing yeah that um, i was like I don't know what you're no, talking about. No, this goes way back farther than that. And it was yeah. more sort of like cooking mama, but for, but for doctoring. Mm. It was like, uh, and, um, uh, but things got goofier and goofier as they went along. You had like magical doctoring abilities. I mean, so I appreciated that these were very abstracted. It yeah. is not a gory, it, it's, there's no, it's not like a, you're going to see a wound and be right. sticking poultices in a bloody carcass. Like it is, it is abstracted it is yeah, you're about not playing into- operation. No. And, and also, this is not a game about being a surgeon or something super dramatic like that. Like, this is a game about you are an uh, an intern. You're a first-year resident. We should talk about, by the way, the, like, differences in terminology. But, like, ultimately, you know, in, in the American medical training System. terminology, mm-hmm. um, Finley is a first-year resident. That means he's graduated from medical school. Um, so he went, went through his undergrad. He went through medical school and now he has been assigned a post as a first year internal medicine resident at this rural hospital um and that means you know he's largely in training but he's also being asked to treat patients um as part of his part of his training and um like it's uh, it's not the kind of thing where he's like going to be doing dramatic, like you know, he's not resuscitating people who are on the verge of death. He's not doing surgery. the The job of a internal medicine resident in these kind of situations is, you know, taking histories, um, uh, prescribing medication. Although, like I guess in a in a real setting, he'd probably be being you know overseen a little more closely by his attending physician. But. Well, they do say that he's figuring out the medication and that someone will later deliver it. So I assume right, there's an yeah. approval step in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it, he's not doing this sort of like dramatic stuff that you might imagine in a doctor game, right? Mm-hmm. But it manages to make that still pretty compelling. Um, so I, I was I was really impressed by that here. Um, yeah, but it's not all hospital because after you finish the day, you kind of choose like it again, back to night in the woods, you get to choose who you hang out with what you do after work. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are some really fun ones. Um, like I will always pick a drama troupe option <laughs> in a game. Uh, I like um, that. but, uh, but that's like the heart is this kind of repetitive. Um, some things are moving. This is less of a, until it's not, this is less of a plot-driven game. It's more about like the day-to-day life of being a junior doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, the end suddenly has a lot of plot, which we'll we'll get to. But the heart of it is this like day-to-day. You're a small town doctor. What does that mean to live that? Yeah, and I think as far as sort of overall plot, one of the things that I think is a bit of a weakness in this game is that it is its plot is a little. There's, there's not very much of a hook here. Night in the Woods has, you know, for there all are the, fake Night... hooks in the trailer. Uh, like, what so are you many about? fake hooks in the trailer, and the title is a fake hook. Um, but it's a hang. It is, yeah. Like I think about Night in the Woods, and like, like for all that Night in the Woods has a lot of scenes about like going to parties or hanging out at the mall, character scenes, really, you know, stuff about getting to know the people. Uh, and this game has a lot of that too. Um, Night in the Woods also has this overall mystery. Uh, like you find a, 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 you know, a disembodied arm on the street in like the first day. Very early. In, in Night yeah. of the Woods. And like, what's more mysterious than whose arm is this and why is it here, right? Um, this doesn't quite have that. It, it hints at it a little bit. Like there's the, the very first, the, at the beginning of the plot of this game, Finley is recovering from a, a, a basically a bonk on the head received while exploring a, uh, disused top floor, you know, empty ward in the hospital. Uh, and there's a sort of a mystery of like, well, what happened? You know, how did he get injured there? And not to not to spoil anything, but I have to say that like, for all that it tried to drop these little hints of like, there's some kind of mystery here, the the like overarching quote unquote mystery of the game mostly fell flat for me. This mm-hmm. is what, what really stands up are the character interactions, you know, getting to know, you know, Mia, your, your, you know, co-resident, um, getting to know, um, uh, oh, what was her, what was her name? Uh, Pina, the, the yeah, goat Pina, who's the, the florist in town. Mm-hmm, the, um, 
your friend who knows everything about the hibernation festival. Love peanuts. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just getting to know the town of Porcupine. Um, that stuff worked broadly pretty well. Oh, and also getting to know your patients, you know, getting to know people like uh, Mrs. Uh, oh, what was her name? Um, uh, De Calma. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mrs. De Calma, the, the, the kindly elderly turtle who has lots of stories about her life uh, that she'll tell you as you're, you know, trying to, to help her uh, with her uh, pneumonia. Um, so it, it has this sort of like, it's, I think broadly people might end up sort of shuffling this into cozy games and it's not, it, there's nothing really cozy about the struggle of trying to provide care in a underfunded and slightly, you know, like problematic, um, healthcare industry. For another TV reference, this is like the BBC show, this is going to hurt about a gynecologist, like first year student who's like, or not, I don't remember if he's first year, but he's, it's like an underfunded healthcare system. And like how you're trying to still help people. Yeah. Um, it has it, it, that same feel. Yeah. It's definitely sort of about the struggle between, you know, um, wanting to do good and help people and being a part of a system that isn't perfect. Um, and also how you have to distance yourselves a little to not burn out. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and that's all, that all rings really true for me. You know, I've, I've, uh, I've watched people go through that struggle of trying not to burn out and, uh, you know, ultimately failing people, people in the medical industry, they do, they do burn out. Uh, it's really hard out there. Um, it, it, so o- overall, I think it's like a, a, a pretty well done story in that way. And I, I, I liked this aspect of it. I did have some weird sort of estrangement from it throughout. Mm-hmm. And that was, I think at first, because I didn't realize going into this game that this is a German developed game uh, and its setting is like, it, you know, it's left intentionally kind of vague because these are animal characters and it's not the real world. There's differences like there's not a wintertime like Christmas festival in town. There's a hibernation festival. Um, you know, the you know, all the characters are turtles and cats and things. And uh, so at first I was thinking like, oh, this is rural America, right? Because I have a, you know, US centric view. And I was just sort of assuming that maybe also partly based on the fact that I was kind of connecting this with night in the woods. But as things went along, there were lots of little things that made, made, like stood out as like, no, this isn't America. And ultimately, it actually added up to something that really kind of estranged me from the story a little bit. Mm. Little stuff at the start, like, you know, you go into the hospital and the floors are numbered wrong. You know, like it's got, it's got <laughs> European floor numberings. Like I did they, not they track. I did not track that, but I should have. That's very funny. Yeah. Like it was the first thing I noticed was like, you know, in in the United States, um, <laughs> sorry for our, for our, our European listeners, for, for in the United States, all buildings above like two stories, the, the way the floor numberings worked is the ground floor is floor number one. And mm-hmm. then this floor above that is floor number two. Uh, and basement floors are usually labeled as basement negative one, negative one, or two. basement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people don't generally use negative numbers; they just say like basement one, basement two, kind of counting down. You see it in ground. older thing, like older buildings will have negative one, negative two, but modern ones will have B one, B two. Yeah. yeah, and the idea of a floor zero is ludicrous to to me as an American. <laughs> like, but of course this this building, it's like um, the the ground floor is floor zero and then it counts up one is what i would consider the second floor and so Mm -hmm. on um little stuff like that um little like medical terminology differences they they keep referring to finley as a junior doctor which isn't something that you say in american medical medicine they would call him uh you know a first year resident or an Mm -hmm. intern um and uh there's a lot of, and that's a British thing. I think they've kind of converted. I don't know how different terminology is between, um, you know, I had to look. I, up I don't know doctor. British medical terminology, but they certainly call like the main street or the shopping district. They called it the high street, which is a Britishism. So that that was very early, <laughs> which was confusing for me navigation wise because it's actually lower. The high street is <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah. Bottom. So I was like, oh, okay, this is a British translation. Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. But in and the high just, street on the bottom was a choice. <laughs> yeah. And that extends to like the, the difference between you know, that, that, it, that extends to the fact that the problems that the medical industry and that like St. Ursula's hospital or St. Ursa, uh, Ursa's hospital here is specifically dealing with feel like European problems. Mm-hmm. 
uh, the problems of American medicine are pretty significantly different. Um, and in a weird way, I kind of had a chip on my shoulder about it. Like I, um, I, I recognize that this was a little irrational, but like I, you know, looking at these, these, uh, these folks complaining about their, their socialized medicine uh, and I'm like, <laughs> do you understand how people are being bankrupted in the United, like they, that like Finley, Finley, um, offers to bring a homeless guy to the hospital for a checkup. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how does that happen? Like you're, com- you know, I understand like they're com- the, the, the problems that they're dealing with are real and you know, that European medicine is not perfect and it is a imperfect system uh, full of people trying to deliver great care under, uh, you know, under challenging circumstances, lots of bureaucracy. I understand those are all real problems and they are interesting to explore, but there were lots of little times where the problems that they were dealing with were so at odds with the problems that I see in the, mm-hmm. in the American medical industry that this felt like a weird alternate universe of 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 like medical industry issues and they the the developers here clearly like put in the work they've got a lot of stuff in the materials about the game and even in the credits about how they interviewed uh, dozens of medical professionals at different hospitals and different levels um, doctors and other providers Uh, and uh, and these 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 problems feel true but they're also really different from the kinds of problems that you see in the American medical system. Um, there's nothing here about, for example, like, like, like burnout is universal, but there's nothing here about like, um, you know, patients going bankrupt from, Mm -hmm. uh, or, or or the, and like the, the, the problem is like the hospital being underfunded. Yes, there are underfunded hospitals in the United States, but also there are hospitals that are extremely rich because medicine is a for-profit industry. Yes. It's, Um, it's, it's a, I want to leave the hospital because I want to go home. Not, I want to leave the hospital because every day I'm here costs my family money. Yeah. Which, which is just a different intensity level. Yeah. And there's people like staying in the hospital for like multi-day stays because they got diagnosed with like asthma. asthma. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The <laughs> asthma one. She's in there. She's in the hospital for days and days because she, and that, that's an outpatient thing here because you would yeah. never want to stay in the hospital for a like extended period of time for something like that, where you're going to be racking up massive medical bills. Your, your insurance is never going to pay for it. No. Like it, there's, there's the whole thing struck me as like a weird view into a a medical industry that is like simultaneously better and worse in different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, But it just like, as an American going into this thinking like, I really want the night in the woods take on the nightmare that is medicine. I didn't get that here because it wasn't reflecting back to me the problems that I see. When it worked best for me, it was the specific issue of being in a very small place where you n- know all your patients as humans mm-hmm. and yeah. like what that does to you knowing that they may not things may not succeed mm-hmm. um it's funny i i actually think you could tell i scanned some reviews this morning to re- since I have been a couple weeks, and I I think you can tell who finished the game and who didn't because ever people who were like cozy, wholesome vibes, it's like you you played like maybe an hour tops, like yeah, because the it's not again, it's not gruesome. It has a very um, charming feel to the town, but you are dealing with life, death, pain, um, and I think the specifics of the healthcare didn't work for me as well because I was like, this feels like the problems are, you know, like when you read a thriller and like some things are exaggerated for effect. Like I felt like they had, they exaggerated some things in the hospital to have a higher intensity, um, which I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm being vague because I think that points towards the ending um, Uh, versus the, what I wanted the game to focus on, which is the feeling of like the monotony of like, how do you every day go and separate yourself from people you then hang out with at night? Yeah. Like that absolutely. was more interesting to me than the, my, when they yeah. tried to up the ante. And I was like, no, no, this is artificial. My absolute favorite scene in the entire game takes place roughly in the middle 
Um, I, I'll try to avoid too much in the way of spoilers here, but mm-hmm. like there is a there's a, a you know a, a significant contingent of people in the town who are very distrustful of the hospital. Um, they believe that it's not providing good care. In fact, they may you know, maybe making people sicker. They you know maybe have lost loved ones in the hospital and feel like it you know it uh, that the that the hospital like betrayed them in some way. Um, and uh, that's another one where like. You know, it, it felt that felt a little like I, I certainly like in in America, people distrusting medicine. That's a real thing, very real. So that mm-hmm. that part did kind of feel real. It's it's still a little bit alternate universe here because it's like just go. You know, in in America, like there's it, it's not hospital like ratings the, are a huge right. thing in America yeah, because yeah. it's for profit, but also and like cheaper hospitals probably got are choices. a thing. I know this is a rural town, so but like it, it just it did feel a little foreign to me, and also like I don't know that much about rural medicine. Maybe this would fit, ring truer to somebody who who spent more time in, at rural hospitals. But anyway, um, Finley is you know works for the hospital. Um, he attends a funeral of a of a patient that he attended to, someone who, you know, in the game you have some really quite touching conversations with. Um, they die, uh, and then Finley goes to the hospital, and um, some friends of the deceased essentially kind of chase him out of the. It becomes really awkward, and friends of the deceased essentially chase him out of the um, the funeral because they. They don't believe they, they believe that the the person in question whose whose funeral it was, um, you know, didn't receive good care at the hospital, um, you know, rightly or not, uh, and uh, and in some ways they're kind of right. Like there's 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 some there's some things that happened to that poor woman while she was in the hospital that shouldn't have, mm-hmm. um, and that scene was heartbreaking and really like r- really well done. I thought. Um, but you know, it's like it's not all that. Like there's there's it it, it it's a bit it's a bit varied and uneven for me. Yeah, um, and to to add to my nitpick is that that result is fantastic. I think the plot of how the things that happened that led to her maybe worsening, like the the reasons behind that were what I was not into. Yes. Um yeah, had it, it, it happened naturally, wrong. just because things happen, I would have been happier than the explanation given in the game. Yeah, I, I kind of get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, maybe we have a little bit of a talking in circles. At the end. But yeah, yeah, we're talking around some things that are spoilers. Um, uh, but yeah, um, a few other just like random thoughts about the game. Like, I, I really, really enjoyed the opportunities that you get to go and interact with other people in town. I had kind of wished there would be a little bit I wished that there was more of that. Um, for example, like I enjoyed the sort of I don't know if it, the vibe to you seemed romantic between Finley and Pina, the the florist, but I thought it seemed like maybe it was, and that didn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there, I, there were other characters in town that I would have liked to see more of, like I don't know the weird person who ran the the stationery shop, and like some of the people that you meet at the weird, uh, like the 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 chili cook off or whatever it is at the the the, the stew competition and. I would have liked to see more of that stuff. I felt like the way I learned more about people were if they became patients. And I kind of <laughs> wish that I had also had opportunities other than I think Pina, you get a, quite a lot of, but I think mm-hmm. some of the other side characters, um, I could kind of tell who was going to get sick because they had more ah. information <laughs> about them. Um, I, that's a time thing, but I, I, I do wish like, it felt a little emptier than Night in the Woods. And I think some of that is that like sometimes you're like navigating and there's no one to talk to. Um, yeah. It felt like there's no like, there's no like, what were they called? Like, um, was it uh, Chalmers or something? The, the like the bear who would like tell you, like read you her poetry. Poetry. Or yeah. In, in Night in the Woods, like characters like that who, you know, they, they weren't important to the story in any way, but they were someone that you could essentially check in with every day. Mm-hmm. There was, I, I thought, a, a nice relationship between Finley and a homeless walrus that yes. lives near his uh, his Outside apartment. his apartment. Yeah, and I basically. kept expecting something really tragic to happen to that poor walrus, and I don't think anything did. He just got some health care. Yeah. Um, I, but, I, you know, I, like little stuff like that, I, I, was, I, I appreciated those, uh, and I even would have liked more of them. Um, uh, and I think the game was a pretty good length. It was 
uh, I think for me, I altogether I sp- spent about eight hours mm-hmm. with it. I'm Same. pretty sure I went longer in Night in the Woods, and Night in the Woods had more, or felt like it had more opportunity for for branching and and different content that you might you know see in different playthroughs or what have you. But yeah, I think the pace is pretty relaxed in the first two chapters. I think mm-hmm. um, there, you know, some of that like emptiness also I think is. So, supposed to be there so that you are kind of in your head or like it's the long trudge home or like I think some of that is intentional Mm -hmm. um if you are a like I hate walking down a hallway person that might trigger that problem with you but I think that was an intentional choice of like there is a bit of drudgery of like you do not live near work you have to walk a long way like you're passing people having fun and you're too tired I I think some of that's built in but it may bother you if you are a navigation should be efficient human being yeah yeah i actually quite like that about this game though like in it's, a similar it's, it's way clearly a design ones. choice yes very much so and they do eventually or at least on certain days offer you the option to do things like take the bus and skip passing mm-hmm. through like the high street or what have you so it's uh but i i quite like that about it i, I like that this game occasionally forces you to like walk all the way home when mm-hmm. you're tired um so you know, pretty cool. One little thing I, I I had in my notes that I wanted to make sure I mentioned just because I thought it was so impressive, uh, although I don't know where else to put this, we already sort of talked about the art, is the eyes of the characters in this game are incredible. Very expressive. Um, so like Finley in particular, because he's he's a, a pigeon, but he's drawn with these massive globes for eyes, right? He's got huge eyes. He's like, his head is like 50% eyeball, but the eyes are constantly moving. They're incredibly mobile. They look at things around the world. You know, you'll walk by like, I don't know, a light switch on the wall and Finley will like glance up at it, look around, blink, look back where he's walking. Like they're, they're naturalistic for cartoon animal eyeballs, I suppose. Um, and they're very expressive. And most of the characters, at least all the major ones, have like a significant number of different facial expressions that they can be wearing. And so it's not just the eyes, but like overall, like the animation of the characters in this, like I love the way that Night in the Woods looks, but it's it's very minimalistic, right? It's got like a cutout feel. Yeah. And certainly characters have different um, expressions, but like they're just like slightly different angles to the single line that makes up their nose and mouth, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas this like has a lot of complex animation for the characters' faces and also sort of you know walk cycles and body movements and things. Um, and I found that super impressive. Uh, and I was consistently like enjoyed looking at Finley. I guess is what I would say. He's he's a he's an interesting bird to look at. Yes. Good um, bird content. I, when Finley is tired versus super alert, when Finley is unsure, like all of that is in not only in the text but in the animation. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what else is there to say about night? About I almost called it Night in the Woods. I know it's difficult. <laughs> what, um. <laughs> what else, so, what else is there to say about Fall of Porcupine? Um, um, I, think- I I will say one more like. I we've said that this is that saying it about vibes is a little reductive. Like this is about the database, like the that part of the game. Um, the trailers make it seem like it's about a mystery, and if that's what you're here for, play a different game. Yeah, um, you're not really so, like there. There is kind of a mystery of the hospital, like you know the 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 thing at the beginning I mentioned about like well Finley bonked his head. That essentially falls flat. Like there's no, there's almost no follow up on that. I also found the opening weird so like but if you do like yeah keep playing like i i personally wouldn't start a game with a dream sequence a but like that's sequence. my personal yeah, preference i, I agree that a was long a dream choice. sequence uh i actually thought it was like i restarted i was like something must have happened this can't be how the game starts um but it is uh so just stick with it because i think the dreams later make more sense but um I've been watching a lot of Star Trek and I have a firm belief that you can't go, you can't do a dream sequence. You can't do an alternate reality. You can't do a people are acting out of character until mm. like halfway through a season yeah. when you've established the characters. So starting with a dream sequence is just a pet peeve of mine. Um, you've probably heard me rant about this in previous games, but it, it started with a dream and I was like, is this the, is this how abstract this game is going yeah. to be? No, 
there are more dream sequences, but you understand. Yeah, to be perfectly that honest, by better. the time I was like halfway through the game, I'd completely forgotten about the dream sequence, which I, you know, they really should have put it elsewhere in the game. You're right. It yeah. should not have been the first thing that happens. And I think that's about all we have to say about uh, Fall of Porcupine for now. Um, I think overall, I did really, I was quite glad I spent the time with this game. Uh, for all the little nits I picked as we were talking our way through it, um, it is a game uh, with some really lovable characters who are compellingly explored. Um, it's in a format, you know, the Night in the Woods format that I really like and I think is underdone. You know, mm-hmm. I, I don't mind seeing people imitate the way that Night in the Woods tells its story because I think it's a great way to do a narrative game. And uh, I was I was pleased to see somebody hewing so closely to that that model. Um, and I liked it. I, I, I enjoyed this game. Um, I think it's gotten some somewhat mixed reviews. And I think it's, whether you'll like it is going to depend a lot on, um, you know, how much the things that Laura and I already mentioned bother you, how much you, you'll be disappointed by the slightly flat uh, sort of overarching mystery, uh, or, you know, how much things like that dream sequence put you off. Oh, one last thing I did mean to mention that I, I this game, when it first came out, got a lot of heat for being buggy. Yes. There were a lot of bugs in the first version. They've released a ton of updates since. I played this on Steam, on the Steam Deck, and when I first installed the game, it wouldn't even run at the Steam Deck's native resolution, and I had weird things with like um, like objects layering incorrectly, so things like, like hats would appear behind characters' heads or things like that. Um, all of that got fixed within the first week or so for me, so I think most of that stuff, if you're seeing any complaints about this game being buggy, if you're playing on Steam, I can tell you that almost all of that's already fixed. And um, I don't know what the status is on the console ports, but I think they're probably fine by now, too. If they've had an update, it's been long enough since the, the release. Um, the one complaint I do have about the game from a technical level is the way that it autosaves. It autosaves a little bit too infrequently for my yeah, taste. Yeah, same. Um, and so there'd be situations like, like you know, like a, a sort of a, a multi-step kind of fetch questy kind of thing you might have to do around the hospital, for example, where like, you know, your attending physician tells you go do this, you go talk to somebody, you go downstairs to the, the basement and talk to somebody else, you like a three or four step thing. And the auto saving happens at the end of the entire thing rather than, for example, at every step, mm-hmm. um, which is normally fine, but it would be, you know, little stuff like I played this game over the course of a couple of weeks and I would put it away and get it back out and realize I had to redo something that I didn't really want to. Especially because I started earlier in one of the buggier ones and abandoned um, because I wanted to play a more stable build. I was like, we, we're not recovering it in time soon. I'll give it a little time. And then I had to like, I realized the save was way further back yeah. than so, I thought it was. So yeah. Not I, a major deal, but there's no manual save in this. And um, the auto saves are a little spaced out and also not always obvious when they last happened. And right. you don't get that I, the thing that I, I really love when games do where if you're about to quit the game, it says like, hey, are you sure you want to quit? Your last save was five minutes ago or whatever. Correct. That would have that. been a huge quality of life improvement because I did every time I quit the game, I had to replay at least 10 minutes, if, if not I don't know more. About 10 minutes for me, but like it's certainly something. You, know, you always well, had to replay well, something. Well, okay. Well, because some of it had been after I did like town exploration. So, mm-hmm. like, yeah, it, it would it would be at least five minutes back usually. I might be yeah. exaggerating with 10, but. Yeah, it, it, it was certainly noticeable. So, that that's definitely something to consider and like watch for that little auto save, sort of a leaf animation that appears in the corner of the screen. If you're, you know, thinking about stopping, I would, I would like persist until I saw one of those little leaf animations in order to, to make sure I wasn't going to have to do so. Once I learned the cue, it was fine. Yeah. So, um, thanks. Uh, let's, uh, let's take it over to what's making us happy this week. Uh, Laura, you've probably got a few things. Oh, I've got a million things. Um, what's been making you happy on your jaunt throughout Europe? Well, I'll, I'll pick something really, I, I can't say it's accessible, but it's something I think you could do on any trip, which is, um, you know how you you're always advertised these like exorbitantly expensive food tours on trips like oh, yeah go to the tour, 10 though. best patisseries in Paris or whatever um we found a site that was like DIY chocolate crawl in Brussels um that was like we we sampled at like 10 stores these are the five that were good and they're all next to each other like go get samples of chocolate they're like a euro per piece which sounds expensive but like you split it with somebody else like it's actually 
you know, maybe you'll spend like 30 euros over the day, but you're going to have a lot of chocolate from a lot of places. And we were like, oh, we can do our own. If we do research, we can just do our own like DIY patisserie curl. <laughs> like we just kind of did this and we had time for ourselves of like, go get a couple chocolates from a place, go outside, eat them on a bench, like a, like a feral, like just a feral mm. animal, like um, taking pictures of the insides. Um, but it felt so much more fun to be like, you know, let's try to get smaller beers and like try more styles or like we did a lot of that food tour sampling and like um i now have very strong opinions about what the best chocolatier in bruges and uh brussels is brussels is gorgeous by the way we we were just staying there because it was in the middle of bruges and ghent but like underrated would like to stay there longer and just chill um anyway i i if you're going someplace like do a little research on food and then try to do your own food tour because I would have hated going into any of those chocolate shops with 30 other people. But walking in, there was never anybody else in the store. Everyone was like, here, are, we're we're known for these four things. And like, do you like milk chocolate or dark chocolate? It felt like having a concierge just to give me samples. And then I would Incredible. always pay like under six euros run out and I would, um, you know, sit and take our time. Um, you know, there was an impromptu, uh, 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 carry on bells, the, the bells concerts where they play all the bells was uh, happening Caroline? again. Yes. yes. Yeah. That, oh, cool. um, there was one of those while we were just eating in a window seat and we we're like, Oh, how pleasant. Is it just what happens when you live in a Belgium? Like you're sitting in a window, um, eating chocolate with a giant water bought from a grocery store. And like, they're just going to give you a Bell's concert. Um, just, I suppose my what's making me happy is it didn't take a ton of research. We had a list of names and a map. We didn't worry about going everywhere. Um, we stopped when we didn't want to eat any more chocolate or drink more beer <laughs> or have a, another pastry. But um, it felt like, we were doing something that someone who lived in the town might do. Mm. And that felt nice. God, you're making me crave chocolate so hard. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't well, that, have any no, chocolate in my house. I think I might have a sleeve of Oreos I, in the, in the, I'm going to go eat it all it was, right now. It was so hot the day we went. Like, I wish I actually looked up because Dumont chocolate in Bruges was so good that I looked up afterwards. It was like, could, and they were like, you need to buy at least like 200 kilograms or something like oh ludicrous God. to ship to the United States. I was like, fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you happen to be there, um, awesome. I don't know. Just sampling is underrated is basically so my jealous, my um, making me happy. Um, well, I also, I will, you know, at the risk of this being like the travel show, I will also <laughs> talk about, um, so I, I took a, a, a you know, my making me happy, which is actually like uh, now almost two weeks ago, more than, more than two weeks ago. Um, uh, but I'll talk about it anyway. Um, mine would have been on, on my trip to Seattle for work, which was, you know, it's a work trip. You know, you don't always get to do what you want to do. Um, but I, I berated some of my, uh, my coworkers into after things were kind of done for the day, uh, going to a tiki bar. I always try to visit ah. tiki bars wherever I travel. It's sort of one of the things I like to, to do best. You know, I love tiki bars. I love tiki drinks. I like mixing them. I like drinking them. But tiki bars are also always sort of like an experience because there's there's it's more than just, you know, good mixology. There's a whole uh, vibe to the bar. There's the, you know, the decor and the menus and everything is great. Um, and I, I had talked to a friend of the show, Mark Bramhill who uh, used to live there and suggested that I go to Inside Passage, which was fortunately close enough that we were able to walk. Mm. And uh, Inside Passage was an incredible tiki bar. It's actually almost sort of speakeasy-like. It's inside of a larger bar restaurant bar called Rumba. So you had to go into Rumba and then go through a side door into the Inside Passage. And we had to kind of wait for a spot because it's, it's pretty small, even on like a Thursday. Um, but once we got inside, it was, it was beautiful. It was like 
great tiki decor, lots of, you know, thatched roof type of crap and that kind of stuff, but also like a huge fake octopus hanging above the bar with like <laughs> tentacles dangling down. And um, there it's not super far from the Amazon headquarters. So they had a they had a, a drink called the Amazombie, uh, which was obviously a zombie that was served in a large fake amazon prime box amazing um it, it was I, I love the presentation it's uh, the actual drink most of the drinks i had there were excellent really mm-hmm. good mixing but the the amazon bee was not to my taste they they uh, rather than a lot of cinnamon they did a lot of uh, allspice oh. which made it taste like pasta sauce to me like, <laughs> it's just not a good beverage in my opinion um will not be recreating the amazon bee at home um, I do like zombies though. I like, I like a, like a cinnamon, uh, type of thing, but anyway, um, had some really great drinks, uh, you know, dragged my, my coworkers and we all had a great time, uh, bought a beautiful, they had, they had a beautiful signature mug that looks like a, uh, like a, like a Kraken coming up out of the ocean and grabbing mm. the keel of a large ship. And it's got their big logo on the keel in gold with like gold details on the octopus eyes and everything. It's beautiful. Um, which is that's always my favorite souvenir if I'm traveling someplace is to find a great tiki bar and get like a, a signature tiki mug that has like, you know, inside passage Seattle on it, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So anyway, I had a great time. And so that would be my recommendation to you is if you are traveling, even if it's just a work trip and you're like, well, what the heck can I do? That'll be fun. Uh, you know, look for find out if there is a good local tiki bar it's always a good experience in my opinion um i loved it so that would be my making me happy this week i haven't actually mixed anything in my new big uh inside passage mug maybe that'll be something i'll do tonight i mean i think food tourism is underrated i think people get so excited about the beautiful places they're going to go and then they don't think about like oh at times you're going to want to sit in a cafe and eat something delicious (laughs) Or sit in a bar and drink a tiki drink. Yeah, yeah. I, the the other big thing I did at the on the trip was a uh, was a uh, like a food tour. Like my work sent all of us on a food tour of the the Pike Place uh, okay. market, mm-hmm. which is you know what you do, um, and that was great. But like, there's a little less for me to say about it than the the you know the the tiki bar, which I was super excited about personally. But we all have our things, and that's fantastic. Oh, yes, I indeed. love Seattle. I'm jealous. Haven't been there in a while. Yeah. So. I, I wish I'd been able to stay longer. It was just like a little, little, you know, work mm-hmm. trip. And most of my time was spent in meetings, but it was fun to, to check it out a little bit. And I, now that I don't have any, um, all, all of my friends who used to live there have now moved away. I don't have any good excuse to go there now. So I was glad I got at least a little bit of a taste. Nice. Well, listeners, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of The Short Game. Um, I'm glad to be back and uh, glad uh, to be back with you. Yes. Uh, you can find our show on the internet at shortgame.fm. That's the site where you got all the links and buttons. And uh, you can find us, for, you can go from there to our, our Mastodon and Twitter pages. Twitter for now. Oh, oh God, I'm going to have to go change it to a big X. Uh, um, I'm, oh, uh, I think it's, I'm just going to delete those yeah. accounts. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Um, and you can find our Patreon, patreon.com slash the short game. Uh, all of our listeners uh, who support us on Patreon get access to our Discord community, uh, which is where we talk about the show. We plan things. Uh, if you uh, want to talk to us about your thoughts about uh, the medical industry uh, wherever you live uh, and have a conversation about the differences between the the nightmare of medicine in the US versus the nightmare of medicine in Germany uh, come chat I'm actually very curious um, or talk about whatever is coming up on the show that's where we kind of toss around what games we're playing and what we're eager to cover uh, it's a great place to come and suggest games to us so join us on discord we'd love to have you um, and let's see uh, you can find uh, me on Mastodon I'm uh, at Reagan, R-A-Y-G-A-N, at bird.rodeo. And uh, Laura, where can people find you on the internet? Also in Mastodon, Laura J. Nash at bird.rodeo. I don't post much, but I lurk. Uh, so you can definitely won't find me on X because I just abandoned that account. So sorry, everybody. Yeah. Too much work. I, uh, I'm just, I'm not, I'm just, I can't. Anymore. Yeah, we can just I move just on. Can't. It's just. Uh, yes. Maybe I'll start giving my Instagram. Um, We'll see. I I did set myself up on threads. I'm not sure I'm going to actually use that, but uh, I'm on there at Reagan. I I, I was very early on uh, Instagram, even though I don't really use Instagram very much. So 
I have literally just my first name as a handle on there, which the, finally, like, I can actually use that for a service I might actually potentially maybe use. So I am at Reagan, R-A-Y-G-A-N, on threads if you want to follow me there. Although, again, I mostly post to Mastodon. I don't typically really post to threads. So, you know, if, for what it's worth. But yeah. um, sure. And uh, listeners, once again, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of The Short Game.